Let's move on to audio. Audio is a little bit trickier. You need to know a few more things to work out the file size of, um, you know, say a piece of music or a sound. Let's see how good your memory is. What are the different bits and pieces? Hmm. I'll give you a clue to start with. The first two things you need to know, and there's more than two, the first two things you need to know about an audio file correspond to uh, these two things here, bit depth and resolution. Okay, Bit depth says how much data for each bit, and resolution is how many in total. So what's the first one? Uh, okay, all right. Now, actually, hmm. I, I'm going to put down sampling rate. You do need um, the sample rate. Let's just remember what that means. That means that every second, right, um, what we hear, like our ears, what we hear is continuous sound, right? But a computer can't record continuous sound because it's digital, right? So what it has to do is record distinct sounds many, many times per second and then play them all at once and it fools our ears into thinking it's a continuous sound, right? Um, so that's what sample rate is and that's measured in hertz, okay? A thousand hertz would be a thousand measurements every single second. All right, now we actually missed the two things that correspond to earlier, right? We said um, for an image you need bit depth, right? You also need bit depth for um, an audio file as well. And that'll tell you not how many colors you can, different colors you can have, but how many different kinds of sounds that you have, okay? And corresponding to resolution, which is how many pixels in total, right? What would correspond to that for an audio file? Re resolution just tells you, okay, how many pixels have I got, right? Uh, how big's the picture? Yeah. The thing that corresponds to that for a song is how long it is, right? So, is it two minutes, three minutes, half an hour? Length, you need to know that to work out the size. Now, one, two, three, we're missing one more thing that we need to know about this audio file to be able to work out how big it is. Let me remember. Hmm. Starts with a C. And Dolby is really famous for it, sort of. Mm. Yeah? Okay, we're, we're thinking about, we're trying to think about uncompressed audio. Compression, uh, it's actually, it's really important to know, but because it's too complicated to work out, we sort of just let you off, you don't have to worry about it, okay? Um, the other thing that we need to know, the fourth thing that starts with C, is the number of channels. Do you remember what channels are? channels, right? So that's different directions that the sound comes from and each one has to be stored distinctly, right? So for instance, in this room, you have two speakers, right? And we call that stereo. Stereo, thank you. Um, if you've only got one speaker or you've got two speakers outputting the same sound, what do we call that? Mono. One channel, two channels. You can have more, which is often called multi-track. Um, or surround sound is the most common example. So surround sound is like 5.1, you know, 5.1 surround. What does that mean? Does anyone know? How many channels does 5.1 surround sound have? <coughs> it has six. They're fooling you. The six, right, um, are, you've got, if you picture a room, okay, what you've got is a main speaker at the front, which is kind of like mono, Right? Then in theory, you're meant to have four satellites around the edges, which tend to be sort of smaller speakers that um, you know, said, you know, someone's behind you in this direction, that kind of thing. And then the point one is a um, it's kind of like a it's sort of at the front usually, but it's a subwoofer that surrounds base there, right? And um, all these other ones, it can't really um, the size of a speaker, if you remember when we watched that video that tells you how speakers actually work and, and produce you know, frequency changes and that kind of thing. The bigger the speaker is, the deeper the sound it can make. So these four speakers at the edges in particular tend to be very small. That's why they're called satellites. Um, but this subwoofer at the front is this big heavy box. Okay, so that's the point one. So you've got six channels there. Does that make sense? Okay, now, how do we use that uh, to work out a file size? Well, if we know all of these things, we can work out actually not just file size, but sometimes what you will be asked to calculate is called bit rate. Now, bit rate, that's a bit confusing. It sounds like bit depth, it's not bit depth. 
Uh, I'll get to bitrate in a second after we deal with file size. Okay. So, let's consider an example. Actually, I'll come back up. Okay. So, a sample rate. Um, does anyone know what's the most common sample rate out there? Who remembers? It's a really strange random number. Yeah. It's yeah. That's the right numbers. Um, yeah, add a couple of zeros. So CD quality audio is 44,100 hertz, which is quite astonishing when you think about it. But our ears are capable of discerning, you know, that's a lot of sounds per second, every second. Anyway, so there's my sample rate. Bit depth, uh, what's a common bit depth? Well, 16-bit uh, is pretty common. Um, just like with bit depth for color, right? Um, the more colors you have, eventually the human eye can't distinguish between all these different colors and like, I don't know, they all it's, it's like blue and blue, I don't, I don't know. Same thing with sounds, most people's ears can't really tell that much difference above 16 bit. Okay, length, just say, I don't know, four minute song. Okay. And how many channels? Let's just make it stereo because that's what most music is. So how would we work out the size of such a file? Let's work it out in megabytes. Okay, how do we do it? Just like before, I'm gonna have to go down here to load my surrounds now. Take your hertz, right? That means every second you got one of these signals. How big is each signal? It'll be 16 bits in size. Okay. Um, how many signals do you have for every moment, every every one of your recordings, you got two. One for the left and one for the right. Did I get that right for you guys? Yeah, left and right. Okay. So multiply that by two. And then just like I had 2048 by 1536, that's how many pixels I had. I need to know how many seconds do I have? Because this is per second. So I'm going to convert, well, how many do I have? Four minutes. And each minute has 60 seconds in it. Okay. So that's going to be the number of bits that's going to be a really big number, right? Okay, so how do I convert? Number one, let's get it into bytes. Okay, so I divide by eight. eight. Then I want to convert it into megabytes. Hmm. So before we did kilobytes, that's 1,024. To go again, another stage to megabytes, you divide by 1,024 squared, okay? Which is actually 1,048,576. So you can write that down. There will be fine. Okay, that's your answer. Full stop. Okay. All right. Now again, you can get your calculator and work that out. You don't need to. That's the full answer. But I'm going to move on because we're sort of running out of time. Um, I said you can also calculate not just a um, a file size, total file size, which is that thing, but you can also work out a bit rate. Now, what does that mean? Okay. Let's see if we can revise this. It means that every second, every second. Um, how many bits does the file take up right, for every second of sound? So you might recognize kilobits. We did it under communication systems because it tends to be, come in, the unit we use morning, for transmitting and receiving. So it's a transfer rate. Okay. So for instance, you might uh, have seen, if you like buy stuff on like iTunes or something, they're like, oh, it's 128 kilobits. Right, more kilobits per second, right, means more higher audio quality. It doesn't tell you specifically which parts, but you get the idea. So how do I work out bit rate? Hmm. It's gonna be in kilobits per second, note that, okay? So what you wanna think about is, okay, every second I've got this many signals, right? Uh, every signal is going to be that big, okay? And I've got how many sets of those signals? Well, I had a left and a right. Okay. Now I leave off this bit at the end because this is interested in the total, right? But this is just interested in each individual second. I don't care how many seconds there are. So that's why I leave that part out. Now, if I want to convert that to not megabytes per second, but kilobits, kilobits, be careful, right? I'm not going to divide by eight because that was converting to bytes. Here, do you remember when we were talking about transmitting and receiving, right? This is confusing, I know, but kilobits per second, the kilo here doesn't mean 1,024. It just means 1,000. OK? 
Okay. I know that's a bit confusing. Okay, come in. Morning. So, you work that out, and that'll be your number for the kilobits per second for, well, for CD, CD audio that's uncompressed. Okay. And I'll just, because I, I, I am actually interested in that one. Four, four, one, four. This number means that for every second of audio on that CD, it takes up that many bits, okay, every single second. 